My dogs ring a bell when they want to go outside and I didn't do anything to train them whatsoever. Today, we're talking about auto shaping, where the basic principles of learning come together to help train your dog without much effort from you. Stay tuned. Usually, we train animals to do things through a process called shaping. In shaping, you gradually reward behaviors through successive approximations, or behaviors that get gradually closer and closer to the response you want. Now, if you're a veteran Sci vs. Sci viewer, you probably know that I belong to three dogs, Simon, Lucius, and Shiv. <laughs> so let's say I want to teach Simon how to shake my hand. I may first hold out my hand to him with a treat inside, and as soon as he paws at the hand, I give him the treat. I only recommend small batch or seasonal organic free-range non-GMO treats. Definitely don't use piece of an old breadstick for this. That would be crazy. But once Simon has mastered the task of touch the hand, I can switch to a closed but empty hand. And as he paws at the empty hand, I give him the food with the other hand. Next, I hold out the hand open. And if he paws at the open empty hand, I can give him some food. Now all I have to do is add the command shake before I hold out my hand and keep practicing and congratulations, now your dog can shake on command. <laughs> now you can slowly move your hand higher and higher until it gets way up high and now he can high five. Awesome, being able to high five your canine bro is killer. Simon's pretty smart. This whole process took him like 10 to 15 minutes and he remembers it forever. Some other dogs, uh, well, they're gonna need a little extra time. By gradually rewarding or shaping the behavior, the dog can go from something simple that he does naturally to a complex behavior that he couldn't do before. But what if I want my dog to learn something that I have a harder time controlling, like to ring a bell when he needs to go outside for the bathroom? I don't always know when he needs to go outside. Well, I managed to accomplish exactly this task without doing any shaping training at all. So how did I train my dogs to ring a bell to go outside without doing anything? Auto shaping. It's an awesome thing. I'll reveal the secret method for training this task near the end of the video, but first I want to talk to you about why and how it works. If you want to skip to the end, go to this time point and you'll get the result. But I know you're watching this channel because you don't just want a smart dog, you want to be smarter too. So if you're ready to unlock the secrets of the universe and how to be a master of controlling behavior, then watch on. To understand how auto shaping works, let's talk about learning in general for a second. Generally speaking, we can distinguish between two common types of learning, classical conditioning and instrumental conditioning. Let's briefly review these two types of learning and hopefully I can convince you that actually they're really connected with one another. And this is the key to auto shaping, which allows us to use classical conditioning to train instrumental learning automatically. Classical conditioning is sometimes called Pavlovian conditioning after Ivan Pavlov's classic experiments with dogs. He would pair a conditioned stimulus, or CS, of sound with an unconditioned stimulus, or US, like food. Food by itself produces a response of salivation called an unconditioned response, or UR. After pairing the CS and the US together, the sound with the food, the individual learns to associate the two together and a new behavior emerges. They salivate whenever they hear the sound. So the CS, the sound, is a signal for the US. In classical conditioning terms, pairing the CS and US together results in a new learned or conditioned response, abbreviated as a CR. Does that ring a bell? Now I know all of these abbreviations can be confusing if this is the first time you've heard of it. So I'll leave a link to some other classical conditioning videos in the description if you want a more thorough explanation. Most of the time when we talk about animal training, we're referring to instrumental conditioning. Instrumental learning focuses more on a specific behavior, usually called a response, and the results that it produces, which is sometimes called an outcome. Sometimes it's called a stimulus, since outcomes are actually stimuli, but in either case, the label refers to the results of that behavior. If I stick my finger in a light socket, that response leads to a nasty shock, which is an outcome I don't like, and this means I will learn not to make that response again in the future. If I make the response of looking in the bottom of a vending machine and I happen to find a free bag of chips, I'm more likely to check the bottom of vending machines I pass by in the future. 
You can tell I have learned to respond or not respond in certain ways as those responses become strengthened or weakened because of the outcomes that they produce. By the way, be careful where you stick your fingers. This is kind of a high risk, high reward kind of behavior. So swim at your own risk. <laughs> Often there's something in the environment telling us when to make that response, which is what we call a discriminative stimulus symbolized by an S. In this case, uh, the discriminative stimulus is probably the site of a vending machine or maybe a specific brand of vending machine. But in any case, the outcome strengthens the association between the stimulus S and the response R. Now the main difference between classical and instrumental conditioning is that classical conditioning focuses on the stimuli, the CS and the US. The CS is presented, it's gonna be followed by the US whether the individual does anything or not. In contrast, instrumental conditioning focuses on the response and the responses are required in order to get the outcome. Pavlov's dogs didn't have to salivate at the sound in order to get the food. The food was coming either way. But an instrumental response is called instrumental because it's necessary. If I go to a vending machine, I see the button, but unless I press that button, I'm not gonna get a Coke. That's instrumental behavior because pressing the button is instrumental to getting the reward. Now a Pavlovian Coke machine would have a button that pops out and then a few seconds later delivers a Coke whether I press it or not. That'd be great for me, but not so much for the companies that run Coke machines. <laughs> but here's the thing. Though they are discussed separately with classical conditioning using symbols like CS, US, CR, and UR, and instrumental conditioning using symbols like S, R, and O, the reality is that learning doesn't occur in a vacuum. And in real life, there are often both of these types of learning that may be happening at the same time and influencing each other. Even though I discussed the Coke machine as an instrumental learning situation, I still might learn to associate the sight of the button to a Coke. Well, that's like a CS being paired with a US, a Pavlovian type of learning. Similarly, I might salivate when I go to Taco Bell. In order to get the food, I have to pull out my wallet and go through the steps of buying it, which are instrumental behaviors. But associating the Taco Bell logo with the taste of the food, now that's classical conditioning that happens at the same time. In instrumental learning, there's often a Pavlovian connection with the S serving as a CS, a signal, and the O serving as a US, the outcome. In classical conditioning, there's often an instrumental response of some kind required in order to get the US. In Pavlov's dogs, salivating, chewing, and eating the food are all instrumental responses that help them consume the reward. After all, if you don't eat the food, is it even rewarding? So in every instrumental learning, there's a little bit of classical conditioning. And, and in every classical conditioning, there's a little bit of instrumental conditioning. <laughs> now that we see these two types of learning are actually all working together all the time, let's go back to the idea of auto-shaping. Now, in a laboratory, maybe you want your rat to press a lever. Now, you could manually shape the behavior by releasing a food pellet each time the rat gets near the lever and slowly get the rat to raise up and eventually press the lever. Now, that would be a huge time sink. There's a much easier way. If you can use a lever that's retracted into the wall and can go in and out, you can use the appearance of that lever as a CS, a signal that a food US is on its way. The lever comes out, a few seconds later, the food pellet is released. Now that's classical conditioning. Now naturally rats approach the food and this results in a conditioned response to approach the lever when it appears. So on their own, the rats will learn to go over to the lever. Now while they're near the lever, if they happen to press the lever while they're there, guess what's gonna happen next? A food pellet's gonna be delivered as usual. Because they're rewarded for making that lever press response, instrumental learning will take over and automatically shape their behavior so that they will start pressing the lever. <laughs> A fun aside is that the famed B.F. Skinner considered this kind of thing the root of superstitious behavior, since the behavior is unnecessary to get the reward, but happened to be reinforced accidentally. Have you ever seen someone press the button in an elevator a whole bunch of times, even it was already lit when they got in? It's the same thing. 
They don't need to smush that button, but they get rewarded for all that extra button pressing when the elevator arrives. In fact, the last button press is arguably better associated with the reward than the first one was. <laughs> auto shaping means the Pavlovian learning will promote instrumental learning automatically without having to explicitly train or shape the behavior. So what's my super secret method for getting the dog to ring the bell to go out? Step one, hang a bell on the door. That's it, that's the only step. <laughs> Every time the dog goes out, it hears the bell jingle, allowing classical learning about the bell CS and the US of going outside to use the bathroom. If your dog is like mine, they really get their nose in there before they go out, so they're likely to accidentally bump it with their nose. But pretty soon, they will learn, automatically, that the response of bumping the nose on the bells is rewarded with getting to go outside. So now my dog can tell me when he wants to go outside. A quick note, some dogs are scared of the bells and you, you do have to position the bells just right so they'll be likely to bump them. But once you get the details ironed out, you can train your dog without doing anything. How many other YouTube channels on dog training can promise that? If you learned something from this video, hit the like button. Subscribing helps us out a ton and make sure you get other cool videos on all things psychology. Happy training and until next time, keep thinking. Okay, boy, what is it? What do you need? Psy versus Psy. Subscribe. Subscribe. Good boy.